Right. Okay. We are here with James Matthews, and you are based where in the U.S.? I am in Pensacola, Florida. It's in the north part of Florida. <laughs> in the north part of Florida. Okay. So you've got de pretty decent weather now, don't you? Oh yeah, it's well, it's, it's raining today, but um, it's usually pretty. It's pretty mixed between sun and rain all day. <laughs> they say that uh, like Boca Raton and those sort of places are very similar to to Cape Town here in South Africa. So I think we, we kind of know the very. I mean, it never snows in Florida, does it? Uh, actually, it did this past winter. It did. We had a wow. snow ice storm. It was wild. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then global warming is obviously doing something. Yeah. All right, so we, we're going to kick off. We've, we've got uh, Govinda also from Nepal. I'm just going to um, mute him as well so that we don't have um, all the extra sound interfering with the, the interview. So now, James, um, we, we obviously heard about you on, on Facebook and YouTube, and, and there have been a few viral videos going around that you were on the Ellen Show and, and that you, know, you, you had this dream of being a, a, a pianist. Um, and, and like any person who really dreams about music, you, you obviously try to uh, pursue your dreams by, by studying it further, and, and then you, know, you hit some hard times and, and some things happen. So do you want to give us a little bit of a, a short summary of, of you know, when you first started your music um, and then kind of you know, why you chose to, to pursue that goal and, and maybe not study something else, and then Obviously, certain things happened that were not so great, and maybe you want to share that information with us. Right. So I started playing the piano when I was three years old, uh, about some of the ages some of these kids are out <laughs> there. So I was a little about, about your, the same size as you, all of you, and I've been playing the piano ever since then. My dad was my first teacher, and he taught me a lot about the blues and jazz growing up, and it was really, really cool, and it was a lot of fun. Um, it was very, very difficult to play piano. <laughs> Even when I was very younger, I had to practice a whole lot. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of time for cartoons and and fun stuff. But the part, practicing the piano was very, very fun, and I loved every moment of it. Um, I didn't get really serious about music until I was about in middle school, high school, about seventh or eighth grade for me, and I started playing music professionally. I was playing for choirs and churches and it was just so much fun. And I love playing music because it was so challenging to play. Um, it, it was just so difficult to, to be able to take this piece of big piece of music to and and learn and learn it so very quickly and be able to play it, you know, very fast and it was just a lot of fun. So playing music it was a big a big like a really big part of my development growing up and I loved. I just loved every moment of it. It was. It was definitely a way to to solve like solving problems and stuff like that. I was able to to take this big sheet of music and be able to decipher how this part goes here, this part goes there, and it really really helps a lot of my my think my critical thinking skills. And, and I just loved every moment of it. Hearing and, that. <laughs> And um, so I started uh, just practicing a whole lot, and then I got the opportunity to go to college, get a good, receive a music scholarship to study music in college. And uh, it was a full tuition scholarship. My whole tuition was paid for, and, and just for playing piano. And I loved it so much, and it was just the greatest, the greatest thing that ever happened for me. Um, things did go down. Good. We're starting to go downhill a little bit. Um, Towards the, well, I was in, in, towards the end of my high school career, and um, finances were, weren't really so good. My family, we didn't have a whole lot of money growing up, and we just didn't always have you know, a lot of things that other kids had growing up and stuff. But um, So once I got into college, um, there wasn't really any money for me to be able to pay to live anywhere, and I just had to make a really tough decision to continue studying music or, or 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 quit school and do something else. And I love music so much and it got me through so much growing up that I just decided that I was gonna rough it out for a almost or close to almost for a year and a half and I started so, sleeping wherever I could to study music and um, it was, I just interrupt you there for a second. So let, let me get this straight. So so you, you got a scholarship it covered your tuition, obviously your studies and and food. Did it cover food as well? Uh, no, it didn't. I had to I, I had to teach a few piano lessons here on the side to 
cover, cover all of them. You were teaching uh, piano lessons, obviously, to, to earn some income, but, but let's be honest, you know, if you're teaching even many piano lessons, that's not going to pay for accommodation and for food. And no. for anything you want to go with. Were your friends aware of what was going on? I mean, did your friends understand that, that you were going through difficult financial times? Um, no, for the most part, no, no one really knew that I was living that way. Um, during the most part, the normal part of the day, I was always in school and I was always practicing and I was always where I needed to be. So, for a long time, no one really knew that I was just gonna. I was just a normal kid at school and, and I just kept focused on my education, and so no one really knew that I was living that way. So then, so you would go to 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 classes. You would do regular lessons, and then where would you go after school? Um, the music building at our school was was open most of the, until late hours in the night. So I always would stay in practice. I usually practice the piano from six to ten hours a day. So like that's I, I pretty much all I ever do is practice. So I, I would just stay there very very late at night and practice for a long time, and then. Um, then the, the, the hard part was always just trying to find somewhere to sleep, and I just slept wherever I could from you know outside um, underneath bridges and and all kinds of places that I just found somewhere that was safe and safe that was trying to be really safe and just and I just slept there. But wow. um, yeah, I mean, was, that's, that's not so easy. I mean, if you if you're obviously finding you know places outside to sleep, winter must have been tough. But yeah. maybe not so tough in Florida. Yeah. Were you studying in Florida? Yeah, we, it gets cold. It gets a little bit of cold, and, and, and um, the, the bad part about sleeping outside is very, very humid here at night. So you, I would go to sleep, and I'll wake up, and all my all my clothes and stuff are wet because it's you know, the dew and the mildew is just hot and and stuff. But um, it was very difficult, and um, and um, that lasted for about eight months, and then I got really creative. And then I started sleeping in uh, in our music building because our our music building was was had access if we had an ID card. And it was up to 24 hours of students, and I didn't think about that this whole time. I was, if I had started sleeping in the music building, it would have saved me so much drama. So after about eight months of living sleeping rough outside, I got really smart and I started sleeping in our practice rooms with uh, pianos. I just started sleeping mm -hmm. underneath piano <laughs> underneath pianos and stuff, and that was a big. Then uh, obviously. I mean, you, you can, you know, you can sleep in inside a music room or you can practice it, but but someone must have picked something up. Someone must have thought there's something unusual going on here. Right. Yes, my uh, piano teacher, um, his name is Robert McDonald at Florida Southern College. Uh, he found me sleeping in in the piano studio, and I think in the middle of the night, it's at 3 a.m. I guess he came into practice in the middle of the night, and he found me sleeping and. It was a it was a difficult difficult time for me. It was the first time I had told anybody that I was homeless, and it was the first time that I um, shared that shared any of that with with with, with anybody. And it was the hardest thing I had to do is to tell to let someone from the outside world know that I was actually living in the streets, and and it was just, it was the hardest thing I ever did. I mean, I mean, I mean, here's a silly question. I mean. Do you feel, in retrospect, that maybe if you had gone to speak to him uh, earlier to explain your your situation, that maybe something could have been done earlier? Yeah, it might. Have, yeah, if I probably would have been more open about um, what was going on, I, mean, I probably would have gotten out, gotten um, out of that situation a lot sooner. But I was just, I didn't really. It just wasn't really all that. It wasn't all that bad. It's just finding somewhere to sleep. Like, uh, you know, I was still going to class, and I still had, I was still practicing a lot. And you know, that was the best. That was the greatest thing for me. So I wasn't really missing too much of anything besides the besides the bed to sleep at night. So I wasn't too worried about that. As long as, as I just, I was so happy learning music and and stuff. And um, my professor. After he, he had heard my story, he he took me in and I stayed. I lived with him for a couple of months, and mm -hmm. so he could find me somewhere to go to another school that had a dorm for me for me to live in, and and he pretty much saved my life. Wow, that is awesome. So it, I'm just thinking from a uh, you know a positive role model point of view. I mean, there are a lot of young kids who um, might be facing situations that that uh, can be. Incredibly, um, 
I don't know, negative uh, can be incredible, almost like an obstacle. And, and it's, it's about persevering and pushing through to make it to the other side. You were so driven by your music that you would rather have stepped outside in the cold than to have given up your degree. Right. It was, it was, music is the, it just means so much to me. And even though having you know, growing up with harder times, that music has always been my outlet. It's always been my escape. And it's always been it's always been there for it's always been a great thing in my life. So yeah, I I even even now I'll never give it up for anything. Uh, it's you know, the music is is it's who I am, so I I would never give it up for anything. Hmm. I mean they say that music is the extension of the soul. But I mean I mean the irony is that obviously music is now going to become your livelihood because from what I can understand uh, once you've been on the Ellen Show, that certainly exposes you to a very large audience. Um, right. Social media has obviously exploded, and, and your video has been seen all over the place. Uh, hopefully, this YouTube video clip will will obviously be be passed around, and people will get to see it as well. Um, yeah. But I mean, people are going to start asking for you, which is always a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been crazy. My life has completely changed now. Um, it feels like I'm. Uh, <laughs> In the last, I mean, when, when you were discovered, how, how long ago were you discovered uh, sleeping um, in the studio? And, and from there to now, how have things changed? Um, that was about five years ago when I was living on the streets and I was sleeping in music buildings. And um, it's just been, it was like, it's, it feels like it's been like an overnight success. Like, I, I ended in a piano competition um, here at my, my school where I'm at now in Pensacola. And uh, I won the competition, and the competition, the prize of that was to get to go play at Carnegie Hall, the, the concert building at Carnegie Hall in New York City. And, and that's the ultimate dream, isn't it, for yeah. any concert yeah. pianist? Yes, it was a huge dream come true. I could, I never in a million years thought I would never get to play at Carnegie Hall, and it was just, a, it was a, the wildest thing in my dream. Like it was, it was amazing. And then uh, Ellen is generous. I heard that. Uh, um, heard my story from the media from, from me playing at Carnegie Hall and she invited me to come play at her show soon after that. And it's just been... It's and just then been, what happened after that? It's been, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been crazy ever since then. And um, I've actually been invited back to go play on her show again in December and, um, and I'm also going back to Carnegie Hall to play on a concert there in New York next year. So, so it wasn't just a like a single moment of, of bliss, it was like a double whammy. Yeah, so I'm really very excited. It's been a, it's just it's been a huge blessing to be able to do that, and and I just I just I love it. I just I'm just so overwhelmed. So it just doesn't feel like it, it's real. Like it feels like it's all a dream still sometimes. But it's just been a huge blessing to be able to do this. <laughs> it's cool. Now I just want to take you back a little bit. When when you were younger. And you, you say your father introduced you to music. Uh, right. Was it mainly jazz music? Is that correct? Yeah, jazz and the blues. That's what I grew up listening to. All and yeah. You played it a lot and you practiced a lot. Were you one of those kids who said, oh, do I really have to practice? Or was it something that you did? <laughs> yeah, just like every other kid, you know, I, didn't, I always wanted to watch cartoons and stuff. But um, but I, I, once I started practicing it, it didn't really matter to me because it was so much fun, like to be able to take these these things and be able to play. It seemed it was almost like learning, you know, beating the next level on, on a piano or something. It was just that much fun for me to play and stuff. But you know, there were times that I did, you know, I missed uh, watching cartoons here and there. But I I didn't really miss out too much because I was always it was always so much fun, like. Once I started playing for ten minutes, it easily can turn into like three hours before I <laughs> know uh, before uh, it's time for me to stop. And you know, ten hours, it, it's, the whole day is just easily ended, like captured by piano. <laughs> that is very cool. So now let's. I mean, you know, there are a lot of kids who, who take musical instruments at school, and the parents say, "Come on, you got to practice. You got to practice." And then they go, "No, I really don't want it." And then they actually they walk away from that particular extramural, and then years later. They always regret not having practiced and stuck uh, sticking with with, it, with that instrument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 a difficult thing to do. Even even now, if I don't, if I don't practice now, I I, I have my where it's harder to come back and play. And um, 
practicing has just been is a big, big, huge element of it. And even once you're, well, even when you're young, very younger, and you're very little, it feels like it's really hard to do it. And and the thing is, you just gotta keep going, you know. And you you do make a lot of progress. It just takes a long time for you to, to do it. And music is you know, it's a it's a it's a hard thing to play, you know. But um, if you just keep focusing and you keep working on it, you know, eventually you do get to where you you want to go. All you have to do is just is keep fighting and keep and keep at it. And before you know it, you know, you might just end up at Carnegie Hall on TV like twice. I did. Not once, but twice. <laughs> that is incredible. So now they say that um, young people, if they start an instrument early, that obviously that that bodes well for them in the future. Could a senior citizen like myself pick up an instrument and learn to play and become proficient at it. Yes, absolutely. I I teach I, I teach a I'm a piano student of about twenty students here in Florida, and I I teach a, a fifty five year old um, retired uh, lady that comes to take lessons from me. And so it was her first time ever playing piano, and she she loves it to death. And, you know, it's um. The, the the learning process is a little quite it's a little bit different for a different kids, but anybody can play if you as long as you love music and you like and you'd like to to if, as long as you have that love for music it's pretty much easy for anybody to play. Um, it doesn't matter how long it's you hopefully you yes. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So now, I mean, we've spoken a little bit about your circumstances and and uh, your music, but um, I'm quite curious to hear you play a little bit. So yeah. what we're going to do is maybe you can play something for us, and then afterwards we want to throw a challenge at you. I want to know if you can play a piece of music while I'm asking you a question, because you know some people have this incredible ability that while they are playing and they're not even looking at the keyboard, they could be doing something completely different. Are you able to do that? Yes. I, I tell you, that's how I used to study for a lot of my tests and stuff growing up. I would study. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I would do all my reading assignments while I'm practicing. I would be reading a book while I'm practicing. It kind of orchestrates music as I'm reading a story, like my all the stories, like all the books I used to read. And it would accompany, like, the music would pretty much be like a soundtrack to whatever story I'm reading and I would study, you know, I would study and I, I would memorize math, I would usually memorize my math equations to the piece of music that I remember, like I'm working on too, or like, you know, like A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or, you know, <laughs> so I would always remember stuff like that. Uh, I mean, and, and of course, you know, there's a very strong connection between mathematics and music because, you know, if you think about the patterns and the notes and how things and the octaves and the, I mean, it's, Generally, it's, it's quite a mathematical approach, but, but what you were saying is that if you take a complex piece of music and you break it down into smaller parts and, and you learn those parts, then obviously it's much easier to, to take on the whole piece of music. So, so we would like to see if you could play something special for us, um, maybe something classical, because that's obviously what, what you are really good at. Um, but of course, you might be able to play something that maybe the children in Mr. K's class would know as well. Yeah, I got a few things I could play for you guys. Okay, so let's let's hear a little bit from our fantastic Carnegie. Uh, what do we call you? Are you a maestro? Is that is that what we call you? <laughs> yeah, you call me maestro. I'm just a the maestro. Okay, we're gonna hear from the maestro. All right, take it away. <laughs> All right. All right. Can everybody see me? Okay. Yeah, we can see you, but we need to hear you. That's what we need. Can you hear me? Good. It's good. It's good. Okay. Uh, here's a little classical piece by um, it's a little something very very fast by the um, classical composer named Schubert. Um, it's a it's a piece called it's an impromptu that he wrote. It's in key flat major. It's very really fast, so I don't even know if the camera will be able to pick up how fast it is. So we'll see. So that'll be a bit. But now before you play, I mean, when you play all these classical pieces of music, do you ever think to yourself that maybe I could actually write my own? I I do I write um, I'm not a composer by Beethoven's means but I do write a lot of pop songs and a lot of do a lot of sing along songs stuff like stuff like that but um, you know definitely anybody that plays you know we all get pretty creative and we all make things up and you know that's what a lot of music that's what that's what a lot of music musicians did we did sit around and just play and that's how they would come on to like oh I like the idea I'm gonna write it down so um, I'm a lot of another challenge you know, for you now that you've reminded me. 
So you do something, and we're going to throw another challenge at you as well. <laughs> right. All right. So, you're going to play some Schubert for us. Right. <laughs> Silent clapping, you can see that we've got a class in Chicago there, and, and Govind in Nepal, and we have in India, and we have Livingston in Kenya, and myself here in Cape Town, South Africa, so you've got quite a global audience, of me, and uh, quite a few people are watching it live on YouTube as well, so that was awesome. So now, are you able to play with one hand? One hand? Can you uh, do one hand music? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's not really much like you can do with one hand. Two on, keyboards at the same time. Yeah, you can do all kinds of things you can do with one. There's not much. You can't even both hands deploy, but yeah. <laughs> and if you had two keyboards, one on either side of you, would you be able to play one tune on the one hand and one tune on the other? Right, yeah. There's a lot of pop songs that we people would do that. We have like keyboards on top of each other. You know, one hand would do one note, and the other hand would do the other. And then sometimes people turn around and play and stuff like that, like that, and you know, stand. We all you know, all stand up and and do all kinds of things. Yeah, there's always you know, use your tongue and your nose. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> so can you play something that, that maybe the kids in in Mr. K's class would recognize? Um, that's what it is. They have to try and recognize the tune. And Mr. Right. K, he will, he will type in the chat. He'll type in what what they think the song is. All right. All right. Let's see here. Okay, boys and girls, let's see if you are up to it. Uh, I think I know which one that is. Oh, they said a thousand miles, is that correct? A thousand miles, yes, a thousand miles, yeah. Oh, I'm impressed. Was that Mr. K or was that the kids? Let's Let's see what he says. Let's let's just turn on the the, the, the mic there. The kids, yeah. <laughs> turn on. Oh, that was the kids. Oh, was that the kids? Are you sure, Mr. K? Absolutely. <laughs> I heard it. I didn't know the name of it. I heard it. I heard it. it J C. J C. Oh, I'm, well, I'm I'm very impressed that you listen to quality music. That is oh, impressive. Yeah. Okay, have you got another one for them, James? Um, let's see here. Um, sure. Top 20, top 40, whatever comes to mind. Um. It's not had a bad day. It's not had a bad day. Uh, it's close. It's actually um, writing a love song by Sarah Bareilles. Correct. 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 Oh yes, we knew know that. Oh, they knew that. They knew that. That's what they say. You guys didn't know that, did you? <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna mute you guys again. There we go. So now. James, I've got a real challenge that you haven't. Well, we didn't discuss this, but but I was 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 watching a TED talk once, and they were talking about creativity, 
And they were trying to show that, for example, some people, if you give them random letters of the alphabet from A to E, and you give them a random order, they can take those notes and actually compose a piece of music from that. Okay. You want to you want to give it a go? Why not? So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna ask Mr. K's team. They've got to choose from eight uh, up to which letter can we go? Up to F. Up to G. A B. Well, the musical alphabet goes from C B E F G A B and C. So I'm busy showing off my my lack of knowledge. So let's just type that in. So it's C. B. D as in dog, and then there's yeah. E like elephant, yeah. F like Frank, yeah. E like girl, A like apple, B like boy, and it goes back to C again. Kind of repeat. Okay, so we've got C, B, E, F, G, A. So I'm going to ask Mr. K's class, I'm going to switch you off mute, and you guys are going to have to vote. Oh, you've muted yourself. Okay, so you yeah, guys can mute yourself. Which, which one do you want? C, B, E, F, G, or A? G. 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 Right, so you guys, you've got chosen G. Uh, Livingston, what would you like to choose? C, B. He's, uh, he's, you're going for C. Yes. yes. See. Okay. So okay. Can't, 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 can't. That's in the same band. Best year. Best year. Like a juju shirt. Like a juju shirt. Maybe he doesn't hear us. Oh, Sebastian, can you? Maybe type it. Type it. Okay, he's gonna type it hopefully. He's muted. I know that he's muted, but let's see if he can get it, because he has been typing here before. Alright, well while he's busy typing, I'm going to choose E. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's so, 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 so Sebastian, you've got to choose between uh, F. In fact, you could choose A, B, B, E, or F, or G. Which one would you like to pick? He's going with G. G. So we have B, C, E, E. So it's G, C, E, G. Okay, so now we can all move ourselves. G, C, E, G. Got it, guys? G, C, E, G. E, G. Okay. Do you want to play around a little bit to see what you can make for that? This will be really cool. All right, let's go. Okay, let's go. G, C, and G. Okay. G, C, E, G. G C E G part, just the like each individual note, so we can see how that tied into what you were doing. Yeah, so basically all these notes together makes up one chord. So G, C, and then E and G, they all combine. If you all combine those together, they make what we call in music called a chord. <laughs> and so basically, you put all of those together, and you have something that sounds like that. That's now, awesome. the songs are written of chords, basically. So if you have like other chords, like four or three-letter combination letters, you can make other songs with that. So you have like that chord, a C chord, and then you can do all kinds of styles of music with it. Like you can play that. Well, in I think you should say that because Mr. K said his class would like to see you play that same one in a jazz style. Yeah. So if you take those you that chord, that? And you can play it in a jazz and a blues setting. Going like this. Yeah, so you can take out, you can take that type of that chord and write lots and lots of songs with it. 
Um, lots of composers, even classical composers like Mozart, wrote something like this. Yeah, just using a simple chord like that. That was simple, simple little start. Mozart actually wrote that. <laughs> Pretty cool. So now what I find interesting is that you know I, I run workshops on things like creativity and people want to know uh, Leonardo da Vinci. How did he come up with those incredible masterpieces? You know he did a lot of characters and, and, and paintings and, and portraits and, and how did he come up with the ideas? And you know what he used to do? I don't know if you are aware of this. He had a thing called an idea box and what he would do is he would have each part of the face, eyes, nose, mouth, ears, chin, forehead, whatever, and he would have a list of about five different descriptions for the eyes. Maybe they were deep set, maybe they were large, maybe they were tiny, etc, etc. And he would randomly select one from each list. And he would then have a description for the eyes, a description for the chin, a description for the head, for the nose, for the mouth, and then he would put that all into one picture. So for example, what we just did there was almost like an idea box. We gave you a couple of random letters and then you created a piece of music out of it. So technically you could throw all these letters into a hat, pull a few out, write them down, throw them back in again, mix them up, pull them out again, and you could actually get inspiration for music that is not someone else's music, but is completely original. Right, yeah, it's just it's something as simple. Like I um, I like to learn a lot of poppy songs and stuff. Um, I hear like um, random noises, like when I see like random letters or something. If I'm reading a book and I, I keep seeing like all these different patterns and stuff, like I keep talking about how cold it is, even something about seasons and stuff, that gives me an idea to write, you know, some like very like very pretty music stuff on just on seeing you know, basic just random letters and, and, and seeing things like that. Sometimes it gets stuck in my head, like, as I'm driving in the car and I see, I see that, I'm like, oh, that sounds, that would sound really, really cool. I think I'm going to try it out. And, and you know you have a hit song. <laughs> How do you remember it all? Do you, do you record it into your cell phone while, you know, or do you, do you just hope that you can remember it when you actually get to a piano okay. again? Oh yeah, I definitely. I write everything down if I like it. If I like an idea, I, I usually write it down so I don't ever forget it, yeah. <laughs> And um, you obviously writing some of your own music. Are we allowed to hear a taste of, of, of what original James Matthews is all about? Yeah, I can play. I play um, I'm going in the studio to record um, a song, a couple songs this summer, and I'll, I'll play you the intro to, to one of those. That Ooh, I have. I'd love to hear that. <laughs> Does that, when you say you're writing songs, I mean, do you sing with it as well? Um, I, I usually, I'm not usually a singer, but uh, you, I get some friends that sing a lot. I write the lyrics and stuff, and I have some friends that sing for us and stuff. <laughs> are, you, are you part of a band at all? I, I'm not. Uh, I've been getting all kinds of, I've been, I've been getting asked to play in all kinds of bands and, um, and stuff now, but um, I, use, I would love to be able to do that and play with a a real band and stuff, and that would be great. <laughs> if you could also, I think we're out of time. Um, cool. Thank you guys for coming in. I like you. Like so, uh, make sure you check me out on Facebook. And um, if you have any questions, that I can, uh, I'll definitely be able to love to talk to you guys there. <laughs> oh, absolutely. What I'll do is I'll get all your contact details and I'll put it on our website on livingmaths.com. And I'll also put. Uh, oh, I think Mr. K has to leave. Because they're out of time in Chicago, so we're just going to say goodbye to them quickly before they go. Uh, let's. Uh, are you unmuted? Guys, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Thank you. 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 So, basically, if, if you, obviously, with all your um, influences now, you, you've got, you know, Ellen, obviously. Uh, promoting you, um, and that can get you a lot of mileage. I know that uh, one of her previous guests um, was Emily Bear. In fact, Emily Bear has been on her show a couple of times. I don't know if you know Emily Bear. 
Um, she is a young girl with incredible talent. Um, and and what is so nice is is that uh, she was playing a piece of music recently, and I and I got to hear her sing with the music, and and that's not something that that she does on a regular basis. So sometimes people have the gift with the fingers, but the the, the mouth part doesn't work with the fingers. Do you have that gift with the mouth as well? I I sing a little bit. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm no Sinatra by any means, but I do sing a little bit though. <laughs> Okay, so now if you could choose your ultimate band, who are the kinds of people that you would love to play with? Um, gosh, if I could choose my favorite band. Um, one of my most favorite um, American pop bands is a band called uh, The Fray. And um, they have piano, they have guitar and drums and, and bass you guitar. They're coming here in Cape Town soon. Oh, they are coming to Cape Town, yeah. They're one of my favorite. I think they're here next month. Mm -hmm. And um, I would, if I could have a band that's basically similar, like they or piano, is the, it's kind of where everything's blood from the piano, like they do. That would be like my ideal band, and um, and that's my, one of my favorite favorite bands of all time. <laughs> that is very cool. And and in terms of your musical influences, obviously some of them are no longer around. The the classics. Um, who who are your classical influences? Your your jazz influences? That type of thing. Um, for jazz, um, I like to listen to a lot of Art Tatum. Um, he passed away. Um, but a lot of my favorite classical composers are Chopin and, and Franz Liszt, and, and um, I like a lot of those. Um, but um, actually, a big, huge amount of influence of music comes from listening to a lot of modern stuff, a lot of pop, a lot of a lot of a lot of rock music out today. A lot of music like that inspires me to keep to keep coming up with ideas and and keep going and stuff. And um, Classical, I'm I'm very much set on classical as my as my as my primary genre of music that I like to play. Because classical music is so hard to play. <laughs> but, um, it is very challenging. I love, I love everything else, though. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I'm quite proficient at playing the uh, triangle. I can play the cymbals. I can play the tambourine, and I can play the full. But uh, that's as far as it goes. Maybe the bongo drums. But I'm hoping that, you know, as I said, I, I would love to pick up the piano and, you know, I, I watch my kids playing and I think to myself, surely as an adult, it must be much easier because you can learn the music quicker, you have an experience of music, you kind of feel it inside you, you, you must be able to bring more to the party than, than young kids do. Right. Yeah, it's... Or is it because the fingers don't work anymore? <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely just a lot easier, like I said, when you start younger and stuff, because you already have a lot of the foundations already laid out there, laid and stuff, and um, it definitely is a lot, it's much more challenging even if that you take, even if I take a, like a month or something off on piano, it's harder to come back and get to stay focused and stuff, so I definitely encourage you, like, when you're young, to stay and keep going and keep practicing. Okay, brilliant, and now, we've just had Janet, who's joined us uh, from the U.S. as well, fantastic. Um, so, so um, yeah. What I wanted to know is that um, you obviously are planning to write your own album. What What's next for, for James Matthews? Where Where are we going to see you? Which billboards should we be looking at? <laughs> um, hopefully, it'll be in the in the more pop, um, the pop, and the, um, hopefully, if it makes it into the mainstream arena, that'll be great. Um, but um, I'm going to be traveling a whole lot. I leave to go on the road from Florida on Sunday. And I'm making stops and playing all over the country here in the United States. I'm going to be in Arkansas, Colorado, Vegas, Las Vegas, New York, um, San Francisco. And uh, for about a, like about a hard month, I'm going to be on the road a lot, traveling and speaking and giving, um, speaking about my experiences and playing for everyone um, around the, all over the country. It's going to be crazy. I mean, my um, my brother and I are going to get in a car and just going to drive to literally everywhere in the States. It's going to be... A huge road trip. <laughs> so you're doing the, uh, doing the cheap version of the touring. So you're basically going together in the car, and it's not like these fancy buses with your own built-in toilets. It's basically you guys <laughs> are doing a Elma and Louise together. No, yeah, it'll, it'll be, we, we, have, we have a Prius, so we're, we're too big. He's just as big as I am, so big, two big guys in the Prius, and it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, that is so cool. Be, and so... Um, <laughs> So if there's anybody watching in the states that would like me to stop by their, or stop by their state, by them, uh, if I'm going to be close to you, let me know. I'll be more than happy to drop by. 
in the States. Is, we are going to talk about that. So what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get your route of where you're going, and then yeah, maybe yeah. if you're performing in any of the local places where the schools are that, that I'm working with, they would love to come and see you and give you some support and, and come and yeah. say hi. Because, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you truly are an inspiration. I mean, for me, I think that a lot of young people are faced with adversity or, or difficult times. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. always that tough challenge. It's so much easier to give up. It's so much easier to walk away and say, let me take... I mean, giving up is the easiest route. Mm -hmm. It's it's much harder to persevere. It's much harder to decide, I'm going to live under a bridge for as long as it takes until I get that qualification. Um, so, I mean, what, what was driving you, yes, was your passion for music, but it takes a special person to to be willing to to carry on like that. Now, you mentioned you have a brother. Is he also musical? Um, yes, he's actually uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my my blood brother. He's um, he's been my best friend ever since I um, moved up to after I got out to the living on the streets. I met this guy. His name is Caleb Lovely, and um, uh, he's a he's another African American guy. Um, he was a music major at the school I had just moved into. And I didn't know anybody there, and um, I met his family, and they kind of took me in and adopted me. And that was probably four or five years ago. We've been, we've been friends ever since then. And Your brother uh, from another mother. Hey, yeah. it's common. Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he sings a lot, and so we have like we have a couple of routines that we like to do, and he sings, and we do a lot of um, inspirational uh, poems and, and uh, dramatic readings and stuff while while playing background to it and stuff, and so it's a lot of fun. And um, I like, you know, I, I love everything, every moment about it. Um, people always ask me what makes me different about, you know, why, why, why do I keep fighting the way? Why do I keep going with life is always so hard? And it's really because, of, honestly, it's because of God. Like, uh, I mean, I'm accused of both Christian in my life. And if God didn't give me music, I, don't, I really don't know where I'd be. You know? Because like you said, it's so easy. To give in and give up and give in, I could have gotten into all kinds of things. I could have gotten into drugs, or I could go to I could go to jail. Um, but God gave me music, and it was always been my 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 outlet and escape. I just, I'm just thankful and I'm blessed to be able to to, to play. And if it wasn't for it wasn't for that gift and that blessing. I don't you know where I'd be today. That is awesome. So I mean, just before we end off, because I mean, I know that you've still got lots of other things to do. Um, Carnegie Hall is, is coming up in, in December, you say, and or is that the Ellen Show is coming up in December, and, and you're going to be yeah, doing Carnegie them. Hall again? Yeah, both of them. We're going to play in Carnegie Hall in New York in December and go back on Ellen in December, so it's going to be double where else, yeah. <laughs> where else would you like to play? I mean, if, if, if there was a, an ideal spot, the mecca of music, where else would you want to play? Um, I would love to um, play. Gosh, when the next, I mean, there's so many different places. Um, um, Hall, maybe in the UK. Yeah, I would love to play at the um, the, the um, in in London or in, uh, or even Cape Town, South Africa. I have not done an overseas performance yet at all. I've never been overseas perform at all. So, uh, if God, if there's a, if there's an open, if God opens any doors, I would love to. Love to have we'll, we'll, we'll check to see if he's opening any doors here, and, and if they are, we will certainly be in touch. That'll be fantastic because it's, you know, I think that the wonderful thing about music is that it is an international language. You can come from any country and speak a completely different language, but music transcends every single boundary. It can elevate a mood. It can motivate people if you put the right music on when you're doing gym or exercise, something that I don't think I would know much about, then <laughs> it can really help and inspire you. Music can also bring your mood down. I mean, you can put a piece of music on and, and change the way people feel about the room that they're sitting in. And, right. and you were saying that you know, sometimes you look at a season and the season inspires music in you. Just by looking at a season or, or, or feeling a cold breeze, a piece of music comes out and translates into a cold breeze. So if I had to give you certain emotions, would you be able to play a piece of music to kind of make us feel that emotion? Yes, there are lots of there are lots of things. That's what that's what um, that's what channels me to play music. It's always this always has to be an emotional emotional connection to me. I just won't sit and play. My um, my piano teacher likes to give me all kinds of things to play. 
And if I don't have an emotional connection to it, there's not, there's, there, it doesn't really last too long. And we, we kind of struggle back and forth between that. Like, I really don't have a connection to this Mozart piece. It's too happy. Like, <laughs> I don't, I'm not too happy to that. I don't want to play it. You know, but yeah, there's always... Yeah, there, there, I, I, that's what I like to do, be able to just sit and play pieces that be able to tell a story, and and that's yeah, very, very emotional, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let me try something. I'm going to throw something at you. I love throwing challenges, and you, and you seem to be up for all of this. If uh, I give you an emotion, can you play a short little piece of music that would describe that emotion? Yeah. Okay, let's try anger. 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 Okay. Now, happiness. Was that the anger? Now, are you able to show, for example, um, fear? How would you translate fear into music? You see, this is an interesting thing, that, that you can actually translate emotions into a piece of music. I find it fascinating that someone else in another country, and we've got several people from different continents, who could listen to that piece of music and go, I actually feel the fear in that music. Uh, there's... Um there's a lot more, like the, the piano is not much, too much of a scary. Um, that kind of does get pretty scary. Uh, but, um, sure, there's lots of there's lots of things I could probably try. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's I, mean, just, I mean, let's pretend if, if, if you were saying that you were in a room and you are fearful of something, what kind of music would go through your mind at that time? Oh, well, God, the first, the first thing that comes to the top of my head when I'm scared is... Um, the Halloween theme. <laughs> 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 yeah. okay. And there's probably a reason why there's music. Yeah, that's the first thing that comes to my head. Is like, oh. uh, I mean, that, that must be one of the reasons why those movies use that kind of music because it does generate that, that sense of fear when you start to hear certain. I mean, Jaws music in itself made millions of people fear shocks just from several chords. Yeah, Jaws is actually just two notes. Um, two notes. Yeah, it's on. Already, people are yeah. thinking, you know, Finn moving across the screen as we're talking. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Sure. Well, James, I want to say thank you very, very much for, for giving us of your time and your energy um, just to, 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 to let the students that are watching out there know that, you know, we all go through bumps and lumps in life. Right. But it's the way you, 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 you actually manage to walk over those bumps and up. Some of us will choose to walk back and say it is so much easier to give up. But if your dream is music and your goal is music, then you need to stay on that path until you see it through. And I think that you are the perfect example of someone who is passionate about music, but you, I'm hoping, and I'm, and I'm sure just judging from your character and, and the way you come across, that you are not going to be one of those people who become famous and then forget to wear your underwear when you go out and you get famous for all the wrong reasons on various entertainment newspapers and, and the tabloids. I mean, it's obviously you want to not only just follow your passion for music, but be a good role model and, and you're a teacher as well. Right. And that must be something that's very special. As a fellow educator, you know, being able to inspire young people. Um, you are obviously hoping that maybe some of your kids or your students will turn out to be great, talented musicians too. Right. I, I'm a, I've always been, you know, a people person. I love talking to people. And, and this hasn't really changed my life. I've always been the same James that most all my friends have known. And um, it's been really, it's been kind of crazy. Like my, my inbox on Facebook is just, I have like 500 messages a day. 
and my emails. It's been crazy. And, you know, but I take the time. I sit out. I sit out. I block out time every day to talk to talk to everybody. And everybody's like, "Oh my God, you're really back." And I was. Just, I'm just the same. I'm just the same James. You know, if you if you see me in the, you know, like at the store or something, I'm just I'm just a people person. You know, I love talking to people, and I like to spread the message of what God has done in my life to people. And yeah, you know, I've always been. That's just that's always who I've been. And I don't. I don't. I. I you know. I just got to. I'm the same old James. I just got to play for a whole lot of bunch of people on TV. You know, cool. I'm, just, I'm just the same James that. that and and how cool too. Yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. amazing. And, and how does your family feel about all of this? Um, I'm very, very close to my dad, and my dad has was a very, very quiet man growing like throughout all for my entire life. And the moment he, like he saw me on the Ellen show, he called me, and I've never heard my dad talk so much in my life, and he was so happy and <laughs> For me, and um, I've been able to use this to reconnect with a lot of long lost relatives that I never, you know, had a chance to speak to. Because during this whole ordeal, I was pretty much all on my own, and um, I lost contact with. Um, I actually have a twin sister, and we just we haven't connected with each other for like five or six years, and um, it's just been we've been able to. I've been able to use this to get back in touch with you know, and with her, and it's just been an amazing thing to be able to. To reconnect with a lot of my family and a lot of my and a lot of my friends uh, with us. So. That is just awesome. So basically, I mean, the fact that you you stuck it out, it actually led to so many more rewards than the, than you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Well, I'd like to thank you so much. I know that all our guests um, who are watching on YouTube, we've got quite a few uh, hundred guests that are watching live on YouTube, and and some of those guests have each got classes of uh, let's say 40 or 50 kids who are watching. I, I hope that you are inspired to know that you know if you have a dream or a passion, it is something that you should always pursue. And and sometimes there will be obstacles in the way, and you just don't give up. You carry on, and hopefully you'll become as famous as Matthew and the, I mean James. And and then of course when when uh, James is famous, you'll be able to say you know. That's, that's something that, that he did because of who he was. Yes, the opportunities came around, but those opportunities would never have been there if he hadn't stuck it out. If he hadn't persevered, then those opportunities wouldn't have actually appeared. So he created those opportunities. He does believe that, that maybe there was a little bit of intervention from above, but, but maybe he, he's let, not letting on that, that he played a large role in that too. And he's quite humble about that, so we'll we'll just let him know that that maybe his talent and his perseverance also played a large role. Right. So on behalf of us here at Living Maths here in Cape Town, South Africa, we'd like to thank you. Um, we look forward to like charting your progress when when your first album comes out and when you're on Ellen again, and we will certainly post links to that. Um, but we're very delighted to see that uh, you are still keeping on. What, what did uh, Sebastian write? Keep on keeping on and facing the music. That was oh, yeah. the, the takeaway message that uh, Sebastian took from this whole thing. And uh, we look forward to, to uh, learning more about your successes and uh, hopefully other people who've been inspired by you. So thank you very, very much. Thank you so much, Steve. All right. Keep well. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just... Uh, end the broadcast over here.